Welcome everyone to the uh, fifth, fifth anniversary of the English Culture Project uh, Core. Okay? For us, it's a very uh, proud day. Uh, why is the rhythm of English important? Well, the reason we learn languages is to be able to communicate with each other. And uh, we would like to be understood when we talk English. Yeah? I think that's uh, generally correct. But if you, if you speak English, you want to be understood. What do you think? Yeah? Okay. So uh, the rhythm of English is important because without the rhythm of English people can't understand you. And so today, what I want to, uh, to show you is uh, which words in English are generally emphasized in a sentence, which ones aren't, which ones are important, how do you learn the rhythm of English? Okay. Uh, the words that we stress in sentences generally are main verbs, nouns and pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs. You might go... What are these? <laughs> okay, well, I'll uh, give you a, an example sentence. Uh, this says, uh, I'd like to drive in my wonderfully shiny car. Okay, nice simple sentence. Um, the first part here, I'd, is short for I would. Okay, and uh, we don't pronounce it. Okay, we don't stress it unless... Uh, we really want to change the meaning of the sentence, okay? So it's not normally uh, stressed. Like is a main verb, to drive as well, okay? In my, not so much, okay? Um, sorry, going back to this one. To drive, no, not to drive. Perhaps we shorten the to down to t. So, listen to me again when I say it. I'd like to drive in my wonderfully shiny car. So we don't really put too much emphasis on that word. Well, what about the words that aren't normally stressed? Well, they are subjects and objects, auxiliary verbs, including modals, uh, prepositions, and articles. Um, and again, we've got an example <laughs> sentence here. Uh, I'd have gone to the concert if the tickets were cheaper. Um, this is spoken English, okay? So perhaps you've never seen this form before. Has, has everybody seen it before, or have some people not seen it? I do. Somebody saw it with me this week. Ah, <laughs> yeah. ah right, yeah. okay. Very good, Rob. Okay. <laughs> Question is, what does it mean? Anybody know? I would have. I would have. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, good. Uh, I'd have gone to the concert. Okay, well, um, I would, modal verb, have auxiliary verb, gone main verb, okay? We stress the main verb in that situation, okay? Um, to the, again, not necessary, okay? Concert, it's a noun. Yeah, why not? So, I'd have gone to the... <laughs> yeah, I'd have, I'll try that again. Uh, <laughs> I would have gone to the concert if the tickets were cheaper. Were, were, were cheaper. And this is sometimes why you don't understand English. <laughs> okay, we swallow all these words. So, I could say to you, go on concert, tickets, cheaper. <laughs> okay. And you might understand, well, get a general idea of what I'm talking about, okay? All the other words, well, uh, do we need them? Well, are individual words important? I did have a song here, but it's not working. Um, well, the short answer is um, sometimes, okay? The pronunciation of individual words, is it important to pronounce individual words uh, correctly? That's not my song. <laughs> okay. Um, well, what do I mean by this? Um, I'm going to introduce you to three words. Okay. 
You probably know them. Okay. So the question is, can you pronounce these three words? How do we pronounce this in Spanish? Can someone help me? Banana. <laughs> Banana. 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 Okay. Banana. Right, okay. So uh, where is the stress? It's on the second syllable. Yes. Okay, so that's the same as English. Now, when we stress a syllable in English, um, the other syllables in the word become weak and often take a schwa sound. Okay? So, this becomes banana. Okay, and people laugh at me. <laughs> okay? Yeah, it is, honestly, banana. Not banana. Okay? Um, but if you pronounce it wrong, are you not going to get your banana? Probably not. I think you'll still get your banana. Even if you pronounce it banana or banana. Okay? Doesn't matter, okay? Uh, the next word uh, has two syllables in Spanish. Again, do you know this word? Okay, how do you pronounce it in Spanish? Donut. Donut. Second syllable stress? First, do you think so? Donut. It's not donut. Aye, okay, I thought it was donut. So that's my point gone. <laughs> uh, well, okay, but again, it's uh, the pronunciation of this word in English is uh, is very different. So, okay, it's donut. So if you go into a shop and you say, "I want a donut," donut, yeah, they're going to say, "Do not what? I do not understand you." <laughs> okay, um, so perhaps you don't get your donut in this situation. Okay. And this word, well, this word has uh, two syllables as well. Uh, the last two letters, E-R, at the end of the word, normally aren't stressed in English. Okay, so the stress is going to go on the first syllable. And um, it becomes burger. Burger. Okay, first syllable stress. Second syllable is a schwa. Okay, this minimal sound in English that almost disappears. The problem is, if you pronounce it slightly wrongly, I want a booger, I want a booger. Um, I'm walking away at this point because I... Can you all read that? Okay. Bugger. Yeah. D <laughs> okay. Uh, it means to penetrate the anus of someone during sexual intercourse. Okay. So you say, I want a bugger, and uh, they say, okay, bend over. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, a word's important in communication. Um, well, you've probably all experienced sending a text message to a friend and uh, them completely misunderstanding what you wanted to say. That happens to most people. Okay. Why does that happen? Because you're not using 93% of your communication skills. Okay. You're only using the words. Perhaps you can send a few emoticons and smiley faces and things like this, okay, to help with a bit of intonation and body language, okay. Um, for me, pronunciation of individual words isn't as important as pronunciation of groups of words. Um, if I asked you, the words do, you, and to, do they rhyme? Most people would say. Yes. Yes? Okay, yes. Uh, and I agree with you. They do as individual words. But when you put them into a sentence, what happens? Well, uh, do we say, do you want to go to the cinema? No. No, we don't. Okay? We say it like Bob Marley. And we say, do you want to go to the cinema? <laughs> okay, do you want to? Okay, where is the do, where is the you? Oh, they're gone, okay. So in this sentence, do, you, and to, don't. Right. So, a tip um, to make your English better, to make you better understood. Make sure your English is listener friendly. What does that mean? Well, to make sure that people uh, understand you, basically. Okay, so uh, how do you do that? Well, you could listen to and copy, imitate more native speakers like this man. 
I think it was a native speaker. <laughs> I'm not too sure, though. <laughs> okay, uh, so imitation. Okay, if you can do that, if you can imitate Spanish comedians, then you can imitate your English teacher, for example. Okay. Thank you very much. We've been English Coaching Projects. This was my Fred talk, and uh, this is me. Rob? Thank you all very much. <laughs>